Hey guys and welcome back to another Unmentioned 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make it so that AI is going to run away from the player. So previously I've made it so that AI will chase the player, and in today's video we're going to make it so that AI will run away from the player. So maybe the AI is being chased, or anything along those lines, so it doesn't even have to be a humanoid like this, it could instead be an animal which you are chasing, or anything along those lines. So what I'm going to do is just move this and then hit play to show you what we're going to make. And the reason I'm moving it is just so that it's more centralised, just so it looks a little bit better because of how narrow this area is which I'm working in. So I'm going to hit play and show you what I'm going to make. As you can see the AI is simply running away from the player. Whichever direction I go in it's going to just continually run away from the player like this. So you might want to make like a herding game or something like this if you've ever played stuff like that. You have to herd animals into an area. Again you can use this to make absolutely anything you like. But essentially the AI is just going to always run away from the player as you can see here. So this is what we're making today, so without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. And also one final thing, as you can see here it keeps stopping like this. This is purely again just because of how big I have this area, so it's running into the wall as it's trying to run away from me. Again, that's just because of how small I have this area, as you can see here. But again, let's get right into it. So the first thing you want to do is you obviously want to open up your AI which you want to run away from the player. So mine is simply just named Runaway AI here, which I'm going to open up and press open full blueprint editor like so. I don't have any other code in here at the moment because I'm just using a blank template. You can obviously use whatever you like. And if you don't have an AI, what I did was I just duplicated the third person character blueprint and removed all the code and cameras and stuff like that. So once we're in here, we're gonna hold down P and left click to get event begin play. Or if you've already used it, you can hold down S and left click to get a sequence, connecting it there like so, then zero going to the code you have now, and then one going into this code we're about to make. And off of event begin play, we're going to cast to our character, which you want the AI to run away from, which for me is the third person character like so. Object obviously being get player character, as you can see there. And very simply, as third person character, we're going to right click, promote it to a variable, and I'm going to name this one character reference like so, so we can easily access the player like so. I'm going to compile and save that. And that's all we need to do on event begin play because we're simply just creating a reference to our character. Although there is one final thing, sorry, but we'll come back to that later on. Right, so what we want to do next is we're going to scroll down underneath this and we're going to right click. And we're going to add a custom event and I'm going to name this one runaway. Does that make sense for me? I want this custom event to be the code which makes the AI run away from the player. So that name is makes sense for me. And what we need to do now is find the rotation between the player and the AI so it knows which direction it should run away in. Because obviously we want it to run directly away from the player. So to do that it's very simple. I'm going to right click and get actor location. So this is going to get the current location of the AI. I'm going to come out of the return value there and find look at rotation. Start being the get at location and the target is going to be the location for the player. So it's going to get the rotation between the AI and the player. So very simply we can duplicate the get actor location connecting that into the target now. However we don't want to leave it as just get actor location because that will again be for the AI. So what we want to do instead is have it as the location of the player. So to do that the target is simply just going to be our character reference there like so. So now it's going to get the location of the AI and then find a look at rotation from that to the actor location of the player. So I hope that makes sense and that is what we're going to do to find the correct rotation in which the AI should be running away from. And so again to finalize that, out of the return value we're going to get the forward vector. Because again we want to get the forward vector so it's the right direction. But we don't want it to be forward, we want it to be backward so it's running away. So the return value we're going to get a vector multiplied by a float. And we're going to times it by any value but make sure that it's a negative. So in my example I'm going to do minus 500. So that is 500 units away from the player it's going to run towards. Anything lower I found kind of makes it a bit jittery, but you can obviously mess about with this to get it perfect for you. You can put it higher, you can put it lower, just customize this to get it working better and perfectly for you. And then we're going to come out of the get actor location here, and we're going to get a vector plus a vector, and that's the actor location of the AI. And the bottom value is going to be the multiplication there. And what that is doing is it's just helping to keep this going in a straight line so it doesn't veer off track or anything like that because we're just making sure that we're adding the current location to the location it wants to go to to make sure it is in a direct straight line there. 
So if you didn't want that, you didn't have to have it, but it does just make it look a lot better. And then we're going to come out with the get actor location once again, and we're going to break the vector, as you can see here. I'm going to double click that to get some root nodes to keep it nice and organized. And the reason we're breaking the vector is because we want to get the Z value of this so it stays on the same height. Although actually I've just thought we might be able to do this away without doing that. So what I'll do is I'll leave it there, but I'm not going to use it just for a moment and just test it out. And then we'll come out of the vector plus a vector and get another break vector like so. And this one we do need because we want to mess about with the X and the Y because we don't want to be adding or multiplying the Z because that will change the height of where the AI needs to go and it just needs to stay on the floor, which is why we had this here. So we're going to come out of the X and we're going to get a make vector like so, X and Y connecting in like so, and we're going to have the Z as the current location so we will actually connect that in there like so. I'm going to, and again, I'm going to double click that to get some root nodes. So again, let me just reiterate what we're doing there. So sorry if I messed up the explanation a little bit, but essentially what we're doing is we're getting the X and Y of the new location the AI wants to travel to, to set that as the vector, but we're keeping the same Z as what it currently is. So the current X location Z value is what is going in there. Just again, to make sure it is not trying to climb or get any lower, it's staying on the same current path. But if it does need to go higher or lower, it will do that, but it's not going to try to if it doesn't need to. So it won't try and go 500 units in the air as this would try and do. And now this vector location here is the destination the AI wants to move to, to run away from the player. So we're going to come out of our runaway custom event here, and we're going to get AI move to, like so. With the pawn, it's going to be get a reference to self, and the destination is going to be that return value there, like so. And now this should work perfectly for us, but this is only going to do it once, and it won't do it at all just yet. So on success, we need to call function run away, also connecting that into on fail like so. And then also on event begin play, we're going to again call function run away like that. And now this should be the code done for us. So it's going to again find the correct rotation from the AI and the player and then get the backwards vector, so the forward vector reversed of that location and rotation and then just essentially go in that straight line. So it's going to run away from the player's current location. So we're going to compile and save and then we're going to hit play to test this out let me make sure we have one dragged in and we do so we hit play you can see it is running away from the player whichever direction we go in is just going to continually run away from the player as you see here and if you want to make this look a little bit different and a little bit more dynamic what you can do is move this ai move to out a little bit again and we're going to right click and get random reachable point in radius Random location will go in destination, and the origin is going to be that make vector there instead. Radius you can set to whatever you like, for example, 500. So now what it's going to do is it's not going to necessarily just beeline run in a straight line. It's going to go in that straight line, and then wherever that destination is that it was going to want to run to, it's going to get a random point within a certain radius around that location. So it's going to run away from the player, but also be slightly random as well, just to again make it look a little bit nicer for you if you wanted that. So let's hit play and test this out as well. You can see it is running away from us, but it's not just directly in a straight line, it's kind of serpentine zigzagging away because it's going in a random place. So that might be better for you as well if you maybe wanted a more realistic dynamic AI that's running away and maybe a first person shooter or a battle royale like that, because it's gonna be kind of dodging bullets as you can see here, running away, but with random locations each time as well. So I think that'd be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do. What we've done is we've set it up so the AI is going to run away from the player in a kind of straight line and we can have it just in a straight line or with random locations as well so it looks a little bit more dynamic and a little bit more realistic as well. So again, it's kind of maybe dodging something if you're shooting at it or anything along those lines. But as you can see, it's just going to continually run away from wherever the player is. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.